Cool, this video just started and it's out of focus. <laughs> there we go. Hey viewers, my name is Kara. You're watching my personal channel, CuteWitch772. Full disclosure, <laughs> a lot of the time when I try to start videos on this channel, I start saying my pagan perspective intro. <laughs> like I keep wanting to say, hey viewers, my name's Kara and I'm your Tuesday host here on the Pagan Perspective. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is not Pagan Perspective. This is Cute Witch 772 This is my personal channel. I have probably talked about this on Pagan Perspective, however, and we'll probably talk about it again in the future. But it's something that has been coming up a lot lately that I want to talk about <laughs> again. So I recorded a video years ago in my college dorm room. <laughs> I don't remember if it's still on this channel. Um, but I believe it was entitled, Why I Don't Buy My Witchy Tools. If it still exists, by the time I upload this video, I might link it, or I might have watched it and decided that it was too old and ridiculous to bear looking at anymore, so I deleted it. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, because this is going to be an update about that. So I want to talk to you about tools, I want to talk about stuff. This is something that I want to talk about things and stuff I have talked about, uh, like I said, in the past, but also somewhat recently on my, on this channel, a video that I posted early in October where I was talking about patterns that I've been noticing in some newer books. I talked about how some of them seem to start with, here's all the stuff you need before they tell you, if they ever get around to telling you in the book, before they ever tell you what it is, like, well, not what it is, they tell you what it is, but what it's for, why you would need it, um, symbolically, you know, whatever. So I want to talk a bit about that. We also recently talked about, on Pagan Perspective, like whether paying for classes is worth it. And then on my channel, I talked about whether I bless my Etsy items and kind of like the worth of spiritual items and um, that I've seen some people charge more for things just because they're blessed when that's not what we should be doing, even if they are blessed. Um, so yeah, we've talked about all sorts of things uh, in this realm, but I want to revisit it again because I don't know if it's because of the newer books that are coming out that are doing this, where it's just like, here's all the pretty stuff that you're going to use for witchcraft, and then they don't really go in depth explaining anything about them. Or I don't know if it's because, like, I see this a lot on Instagram, and so I was talking to someone earlier today, the day that I'm recording this, um, I was talking to someone about, like, I don't know if this trend that I'm noticing is because a lot more people are talking about witchcraft on Instagram now and because photographs, right, which is the whole point of Instagram, is photographing things. Your posts are all photos or images of text, but for the most part it's photography. And photography can be so centered on the things, right? It's about setting up your pretty setup at the risk of being redundant, setting up your setup and taking a beautiful picture of the things. And so I don't know if that's why. And so because people are looking at everyone else's pretty things, they're focused on things, but without dancing around the bush anymore, let's tell you what I'm talking about. I'm seeing a lot of people talking about the things that they need for magic and the things that they're going to run out and buy um, when they're a brand new, totally beginner, talking about the things that they're going to go out and buy, seeing a lot of people asking other people before they ask anything about the beliefs, before they ask anything about what do we celebrate, how do you practice, do you do this, that, or the other thing, they're asking where do I get this item. Um, if they see a post from another witch or another pagan that has an item in it, they say, ooh, should I have one of those? Is that a pagan thing? And I have also seen people 
post a beautiful picture of a beautiful item that they purchased, usually brand new, sometimes at a thrift store. Go thrift store finds. Like, I love thrift stores. But just beautiful things, right? I've seen people post pictures of these beautiful things and then say, hey, everybody, I'm a new witch. I'm a new pagan, you know, whatever the case may be. I finally got this fill in the blank type of item here. Does anyone know what it's used for? Can anyone help me figure out what I'm supposed to do with it? Like, I've literally seen that so many times. I've seen people say, hey, guys, so I have this thing now. Um, what am I supposed to do with it? And it's like, I need to collect myself because I'm just kind of shocked. I'm just kind of shocked that people are going out and buying items or ordering items. And maybe it's because so many of us are, you know, so many people now are sponsored by things. We have brand deals. We have affiliate links. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's just that whole culture of like someone that you like and look up to who's pagan or a witch who's on social media has affiliate links to these things or because they post something you go out and buy it but then you know for them it was something maybe that they already knew why they wanted it so that's why they got it and they were just saying like if anyone else wants this here's a great place to get them but younger newer impressionable people and not all younger some of them are my age some of them are even older um but newer people who are a little more impressionable about what's going on in witchcraft and paganism i'm seeing a lot of them like run out and buy the thing like it's important to have the thing if i'm gonna be a witch i have to have these things uh now i'm a witch now right and then it's like so what do i do with it <laughs> um uh, even things that you don't have to pay for, honestly. Um, so this isn't just about buying things, but that is obviously a big part of it. But it's anything. It, it's getting anything. Um, so for example, this is one that I saw a couple months ago. I saw someone talking about how they were collecting rainwater and they were sharing their process for how they decided to set it up and how they were going to filter it to make sure there was no bugs or anything in it. And it was a, like a really helpful post just about like a method of collecting rainwater. And a newer practitioner commented on it and said, wow, that's really cool. So what do you use rainwater for in your practice? And the person who had posted about it said, you know, actually, I'm not sure. I just know that it's a thing that a lot of people use. So I figure I'll collect it and then I'll figure out what to do with it. Okay. Okay. Take that in. All right, this is a thought process, right? And actually, when you're talking about something that's free, like collecting rainwater, I actually think that process is totally valid. And I'll tell you the biggest example of that in my practice is crystals. I cannot tell you everything in the world about every single crystal. What I can tell you about is the crystals that I have. So you've probably heard me say before, if you've seen anything that I've specifically made about crystals, that I learn about crystals as I acquire them pretty much. Or if I'm reading about crystals, if I'm doing my research and I'm looking for, you know, what are crystals that I can use for this type of thing? And I'm seeing the same name of a crystal that I don't already own, so I don't know that much about it. And I'm seeing the same name pop up in multiple books, multiple web pages. Then I'll make a trip to the witchy store and say, you know, I've been seeing the name of this crystal pop up a lot recently for use in this specific thing. So I'm gonna go pick one up. And then I'm going to work with it. And I'm going to work with it for that thing that I've read that it's good for. So I do think that um, learning about something as you acquire it is good. Okay, actually on the flip side, I've also done this where I've met people in real life who are newer practitioners and they want to start learning more about crystals. So I will put together either a little gift package of multiple or I'll pick out one crystal for them and I will gift someone a crystal and then say, this is the name of this crystal. 
go learn about it, you know? So in that case, you have it in your hand. I have crystals everywhere. So, um, in that case, it's like, here, I have given you this amethyst. You don't know anything about it yet, but now you own it, but I've given it to you. You didn't have to go out and spend money on it. I'm gifting you a bunch of homework <laughs> because now you have to go learn about it and figure out what it's used for. Um, so I've done that. I have done that. And this brings me back around to when I said the video that I made years ago was why I don't buy my witchy tools. And at the time, I feel like I had a totally different idea about this. And that's why I wanted to make this newer video. So a lot of us, when we were starting out, if you're my age, if you were starting out uh, a decade or even two decades ago, probably it was still a thing. It was a thing that people would say, don't go out and buy your tools. Wait for them to come to you or like get them as gifts. So you could ask someone, like you could say, you know, for my birthday, I'd really like this crystal or I'd really like some crystals, like pick out crystals and then I'll learn about them, whatever. Um, I'd really like some candles. I'd really like a wand, you know, whatever. And so I know that depends on, um, if the people you're asking about know that you're studying paganism and witchcraft. So like for me with my mom, that was totally possible. So a lot of my stuff was gifted to me early on and I just lucked out in that case, honestly. Not everyone is learning about it in an environment where a lot of people are really accepting. So sometimes you do have to go out and get your own things. And so it's not, it's not that going out and getting your own things is bad. And this is what I think I talked about in that video. And I've definitely talked about this in years since then. Talked about it in recent videos. In passing. I think that what that was about was to discourage new practitioners or new people studying it um, before they ever start practicing. Just students, new students. To discourage people from going out and buying all of the things, all the things, um, before they knew what they were for, what to do with them kind of thing. And so I believe that that's why we told people that. Nowadays, for the past several years, it's been very much out there in the open that everybody's like, the don't buy your own tools thing is bullshit, don't let them fool you, you can buy your own stuff. And that's true. You're totally allowed to buy your own things. Like, <laughs> definitely. Um, but again, I think it was to discourage the, the impulse shopping trip. <laughs> to just go out and acquire all of the items as though that is what witchcraft is. Is just the collecting of the pretty things. However, <laughs> we love the pretty things. And so many of us have huge collections of them because we've acquired them over years, though, is the thing. We didn't get them all in the first month that we were studying paganism. We acquired them over time. Or, as it was in my case, and is for many people, we were given them as gifts by everyone. <laughs> everyone in our lives. Once people know that you like crystals... They will get you all of them. Like, this one's like a, a cut thing, but all of them. Once people know, you will have so many, right? Um, this is just on my bookshelf right here. That's not even my whole house, right? Um, I didn't buy any of these. Mostly my mom did. My mom is hugely into crystals. And so she ended up gifting me many. There's two right there on that table that I can see. There's one, two. All right, so there's four more in this room that I can see from where I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, so goodness gracious, I'm not telling you not to collect a bunch of crystals. I'm just saying you don't have to go out and buy all of the crystals in the first month and spend a bunch of money on them. And then especially not if you're then gonna go, hey guys, I bought these, what do I do with them? Like, 
there's a lot of free resources on the internet. Videos, websites, even some books you can look at. Use your libraries. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my theme this year is support your local public libraries. Um, because then you can check out books for free and decide if you like them before you ever have to pay money for them. So there's that. Public libraries, sponsor me, please. I am a huge proponent of you. Um, but yeah, and then so you can you can find books on crystals at the library or you find a cheap one online, you know, whatever. But I'm just saying, like, you can do a little bit of research before you go out and buy all the things. And, like, you don't have to get huge chunks like this, too, obviously. Like, again, these were given to me. Um, something like this costs way more than a little piece, a little bit like this, same crystal. Um, you really don't need, like, multiple of them unless you're going to be working with crystal grids or crystal nets. And if you don't know what those are, then you definitely don't need enough crystals to do them yet. You know, you can start with one. Um, but yeah, so I know a lot of people, this is kind of a secondary thing that goes along with this. I've seen a lot of people saying like, um, oh, what was it? It's just, just kind of the idea that like, it's okay to go out and buy the things because that's what it was. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, I was guilty of this early on in my practice. I feel like this is something that I read in some books. This is an idea that a lot of people had, and so I kind of internalized it. And now, uh, now that I've heard other people talk about it, I realize that it can be kind of problematic if we say it in this way. Um, that is how it used to be said to me. And I realized looking through my journals recently from early on in my practice that I was guilty of this internal monologue and I absolutely don't believe it anymore. So I do want to bring it up here, which is the idea that a real witch, anything that starts with those words is always cringe central, right? Cause like, what does that mean? And who are we to say? Um, but so it's this idea that a real witch wouldn't need any tools. And if you can't, operate the forces of magic with just your mind and your body, then you're not a real witch. Or that in my journal I wrote, you're focusing too much on material things and you're not focusing enough on the, the spirituality, the craft. I don't know. I didn't finish that sentence. I just said, you're focusing too much on material things. And yes, I feel like there are times that people do focus too much on material things and we can use them as a crutch or we can use them as a mask um, to make it seem like we're super spiritual because we have 16 crystals in one room of our house and like, doesn't that prove that I'm awesome? Like, no, that's not, that's not an indicator of my power at all. <laughs> like, it really means nothing in the long run but I like them and they're tools for energizing the space. So what I've heard a lot of people say recently is that obviously, gosh, obviously saying stuff like that is harmful because it makes people think that if they can't do something without a tool, then they're never gonna be a real witch. And like, oh my God, as soon as I heard that, I was like, oh, well, yeah, no, of course, of course not. And so I immediately was like, yeah, out the window, like, get rid of that, that old thought. I understand where it was coming from, but I think it was this same idea. I think it was the same idea of why we tell people, don't buy your own tools, let them come to you. Because it was just a discouragement from going out and buying and collecting all of the things as though that in itself is what being a pagan and following a pagan path is about, because it isn't. However, Yes, we use tools. They are very useful. I think that I still stand by the fact that so many of our basic tools, you do not have to go out and buy an expensive version of it to start working with it and start learning how to use that energy. So, and there's also a lot of really tools that we consider basic that some witches don't use at all. And it's just something that we don't like, 
we don't feel the need to use it because that aspect of our practice is not a thing that we do or we have a different way of doing it that doesn't require it. For example, you may have heard me in the past talk about how I really don't have an athame. I have a couple of blades that I have used in ritual, but I don't really have an athame. And that's because, especially back in high school, but this is still a thing that exists in my life, I have a little bit of a problem sometimes with blades. Um, just kind of like, I am not diagnosed with OCD. That is a real thing. It is a real diagnosis. I have not been diagnosed with it. But there is a sort of compulsion that I have um, as a result of obsessive thoughts sometimes in relation or um, in response, excuse me, to blades. Um, that sometimes I am very scared by them. I am not always, um, but sometimes. So I just kind of learned to, because I started practicing in high school when this was a very difficult um, obsessive thought pattern that I had, I steered clear of blades, so I learned how to do the things that you might normally do with a blade with just my hand. But other people might not feel truly connected or able to visualize it fully without some kind of a tool in their hand. If not a blade, sometimes people use a wand in place of a blade. You may have also heard me say in the past that I do own a wand that was given to me to be my wand, but I don't really connect with it, and I don't really connect with the idea of having a wand. And so that's where the idea of getting things as gifts is not always great, because maybe that person was giving you something that they really liked, but not something that's really great for you. So it's better if you can, like, pick something out and someone else get it for you. Um, but I'm actually thinking about doing a little series of videos on this channel coming up, talking about my tools because there are some interesting things recently that I have been exploring within my path in relation to the use of wands and athames. And, you know, I've been doing this for over a decade now without using wands or athames. So for this to pop up now in my practice is like kind of interesting. You know, I've been doing it for a long time and now suddenly it, you know, it's the reverse where some people might feel like you need to start by using a tool and then maybe you gradually are able to visualize and do the work without it. Um, I'm kind of doing it flip side. <laughs> like I've been doing without them for so many years and now there are things that are calling to me like, hey, use me. I want to help, right? So yeah, this whole idea surrounding tools and things and buying them versus finding them versus gifting, you know, whatever, is very interesting to me. And it's just a thing that's come up a lot because I do. I feel a very strong when I see people say things like, hey, just bought this. What do I do with it? What's it for? I'm like, why did you go out and buy it if you didn't know what it was for? And it ends up being because, well, so-and-so had one or all the other witches have them, so I figured if I'm going to be a witch, I need to have the thing. And so I do, I still stand by the idea that you do not need things to be a witch. However, I now understand that saying something as specific and horrible as a real witch doesn't need things makes it sound like if you do feel the need to use a tool, as so many of us do, then it makes it sound like you're not a real witch. And I don't agree with that at all. Real witches do use tools. We do use them sometimes because we have to, because we feel like we need that to aid with the energy. You know, like I couldn't build a birdhouse without a hammer and some nails unless I had a screwdriver and a drill gun. Then I could probably do it. Um, but you know what I mean? There are specific tools for specific jobs, and sometimes you need those things. Oh, I could actually probably also do it with wood glue, but that might not work as well for a long time. That was a bad example, <laughs> but anyway. But actually, no, that's a good example, because those are all tools. Those are all things that we need, and so, you know, someone might use anathema. Someone might use a wand for the same job. A third person might just use their hand. Whatever. So I stand by the birdhouse example. That's okay. But yeah. 
So let me know if you think a series about my tools would be interesting to you. Because what I would like to do is one video per tool, show you the one that I have, if I have one, tell you the story of how I obtained it or who gave it to me, and whether or not it's been useful in my practice, how I use it, stuff like that. Let me know if you'd like that because, yeah, I feel like it's a thing that is very much in the air now um, that I'm really excited to talk about. It's just, oh, it's such a difficult topic. I see so many baby witches doing things and I'm like, I just, I don't want anyone to feel like you can't be a witch if you don't have the money or the time or the ability to go out and buy all these things, right? Because the things are great. They're really useful, but you don't necessarily need them. Sometimes you do need them, but it's not, you don't have to have them in order to start studying. Ah, you see why this is difficult? Oh yeah, one more thought, okay? We'll, we'll wrap this up in a minute. Last thought, if you do feel like in order to start studying and learning about tools, I sort of, um, alluded to this earlier in the video, but then I got on a different track and I didn't remember to come back to this until just now. So thank you, whoever just reminded me. But if you feel like you do need to have some of these tools to start working with, remember that there is a mundane, simple version of all of those things. So if you want to use a wand, you don't necessarily have to go out and buy a Harry Potter-like wand. You can, one, make one out of a stick. Um, you don't even have to whittle it necessarily. You can just go find a twig that calls to you. Um, I actually, I did not plan this. But you, all, you all know, I've told you before, I have a bunch of stuff all over my desk. Um, I have half of a dried rose stem that still has thorns that I have used in ritual as a wand, also as a stirring device <laughs> for mixing things. Um, so it can be something from nature and that might be really useful. Um, I believe this was something related to rose energy that I was doing and it just happened to end up on my desk because I've been moving stuff around. But so it can be something from nature it can also be um, literally anything. <laughs> it's kind of a long story. Maybe I'll just save this for the, for the wand thing as to why I think this. But your wand can be anything related to your personal magic. So if you're a writer and you feel like a lot of energy flows through you through writing, then you can use a pencil or a pen as your wand. If you are a painter, a paintbrush it goes on from there. You know, kitchen witches a lot of the time use a kitchen knife as their athame, so you might use a wooden spoon as your wand or whatever whatever works better in that analogy. Kitchen witches let us know, right? So I'll talk about that more um, in the video that I do about wands if that does end up being something that you guys want to see. Actually, I'll probably end up doing it anyway, even if you don't particularly want to see it, because I know you'll watch it, uh, and I think it'll be good. But maybe if a lot of you tell me that you want to see it, maybe that'll just mean that I do it sooner. So, thanks so much for listening. I just have a lot of thoughts, and this is my place to share them. So, before I forget, again, as I always do, at the end of the video, we have videos that pop up over here. I usually make it something that was related to the topic of this video, or it might just be the most recent video on my channel, and then there will be a little subscribe thing over here to subscribe to this channel if you loved this. There's more info in the description, other places you can find me, and until next time, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to be awesome, blessed be, and goodbye.